Hey everyone, it's Adam Helfman from Hire It Done. A lot of homeowners email me, request information on how to get rid of a bad contractor. So I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks right now that is gonna help you in case you need to part ways with a bad guy. So let's talk about a scenario. Let's say it's a bathroom remodel. You meet with a bunch of contractors and you find one you like and he says to you, oh, it's gonna be seven to 10 days to finish the job. I need this much down. I'll get this, this, and this done, and let's get started. You get all excited, uh, you give him a big deposit, and he comes on Monday with his guys, and sure enough, he starts the demo and stops the job and says, oh, hold on, we need more money. I gotta reframe this, and I gotta go to another job really quick, and I'll be back in a couple of days, but you know, we have to reframe stuff. You're excited, you're like, oh, what is it, wait a minute, more money. So, you're like, okay, you don't wanna rock the boat a little bit, and you ask him, well, what's it for? Well, I got to do extra work. Hmm. And he says he needs the money now. So at the beginning of the job, you don't want to upset the apple cart. You give him the money. And then a couple days go by. You text him. He says, I'll call you right back. You call him. He says, I'm in a meeting. Give me, I'll call you tonight. And finally, he calls you and says, yep, yeah, we're going to be there tomorrow. They come the next day. They drop a few two-by-fours off. Now, this is like day four, right? It should be demolition day one and two, and then they start the reconstruction. He's on day four, and he hasn't even finished demolition yet. So you, you're there, and you're like, hey, I'm all excited. Can we get the momentum? You know, you said this and that. And he looks at you, and he says, I know what I'm doing. Just ease up. We had a problem. We're going to take care of it. The guys are working. Okay, you got them working, so you're crossing your fingers. And next thing you know, more couple days go by. You start texting him. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, this isn't right. He doesn't respond now. So finally you're like, uh-oh, what am I going to do? Finally you call him, no answer. Now, not, maybe you should do this, maybe you shouldn't. You call him from another phone number. A lot of people try that, and he answers. And you're like, hey, Mr. Builder, it's me. I've been trying to call you, you haven't called me back. I'm getting concerned. And he gets really snippy with you. Excuse me? This is how it is. This is my company. This is what you're going to get. And you're like, whoa. So, so now you're at the point where like, okay, I'm getting screwed. Something's wrong. This is when you have to start the paper trail. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is really you should have the paper trail from the beginning. But some people, they get excited and they move forward without thinking it through. The paper trail is this. Copy the contract the conversations and the text messages, you gotta print them all out. But now you gotta change your language. You gotta contact your builder and you say, hey, Mr. Builder, I've got a problem with your work and I've got a problem with you. It's time that we meet at the house and we walk through what the next steps are in order to complete this project and that's how you ask it. And that's what you say to them. You text it, you email it, you call them. But you now have to have a timestamp because what's going to happen is going to put him on notice that you're not happy. Now, he's going to respond either negatively, positively, or not respond. Those are the options. If he responds positively, maybe your message is getting through. But the key is to get him to the job. If he doesn't, if he responds negatively, then you know which option you need to do after that. Negatively could mean, hey, I'll get there when I can. I'm the boss of the job. You're not the boss. You know, that kind of thing. Well, at the big picture of home improvement, the golden rule is he who has the gold rules. So you cannot write any more checks. When you stop the money, a lot of times the job stops, but a lot of times the, the shenanigans stop. So here's my other point. He doesn't respond. At that point, you need to fire him from the job. But let's go back to scenario one where he responds and he comes over. Now he's at your house. And you have to play the remember game. And you have to document everything. So when he comes back over, you say to him, Mr. Contractor, listen, you're here because everything that's happened up till now is not what you promised me. So let's go back to the first meeting and let's go back to when you said to me it's a five-day job. You do bathrooms all over the place. And if you're an expert, Mr. Builder, then how come you didn't know that you were going to need extra work over here and there? I feel like you knew that and you didn't tell me. So now we're here. Tell me how you're going to get the job back on track and how I'm going to be satisfied. Because at this point, if you can't, it's okay. We can part ways as friends. And you can give me a refund or whatever we disagree, agree on, and I'll, I'll find someone else. So the key to that is to 
take control of the narrative, take control of what's going on because it's your house and you're paying. And if he doesn't cooperate with you, it's time to part ways. Now, if he's a smart counter, he may say, to, you know, what, Mr. Jones, I'm sorry. It was a bad couple days. Here's my plan going forward. Now, if he does give you a plan, you got to put it in writing. you got to say what are happening each day. And then if he agrees, then you need to say to him, listen, I want a phone call every day. Now, phone call text could be the same thing. Now, even if he texts you, hi, the guys aren't coming today, that's better than not texting you because the worst feeling a homeowner can have is sitting there wondering if he's coming, looking out the window. Is he there? Where's the guy? The feeling's terrible. So you need that. He needs to commit to that. And then at that point, you should put it in writing. You should have him write a change order that says, due to you know interruption in the schedule, the following items are now going to be moving forward. Have him write it down. Sign it. It could be on any kind of piece of paper. He should have a change order. Now remember, change orders interrupt the rhythm of the work. So it will slow it down a little, but then you can pick it back up. So that's the scenario I give you moving forward. And in that scenario, you also got to agree on when the next payments are. So my suggestion to you on the next payments are simple. Payments come to the contractor after he completes a task, not before. So after demolition is finished, after the framing repair is finished, after rough plumbing is finished, not on start of plumbing, not on start of demolition, not on start of electrical, after. That way, when you're paying, something's completed. So if they ever part ways, you've, you pay for work that's done. That's important. Remember that. And if you ever need help on that, always go to HireDone.com and ask Adam. I'll help you with that. So that's the one scenario. Now the scenario where you're ready to part ways. This is where it could cost you money. You part ways because you're unsatisfied with the job. You need to have it in writing. Now, I am anti-litigation. I don't ever want to sue anyone. But sometimes you have to have an attorney write a letter that demands breach of contract, you know, you got to get a lot out there. If you didn't pull a permit, whatever it is. But you need to say, hey, due to our irreconcilable differences, we choose not to move forward anymore. And we've paid you X amount. We feel like that amount of money is more than, than you've done for. And at that point, you can say, we're wiping our hands and moving on. Or you want a refund. And then, the re and then you have to be prepared for the builder. Oh, you, need, you owe me more money. I need more money. That's where it gets dicey. You got to hold your ground. And at the same time, you need to send him a letter in writing that he's terminated from the contract, terminated from the job. Now, you also got to read the fine print. A lot of contractors, you know, they have that fine print, right? You better read it because it may call for arbitration. It may call for cost. It may call for a penalty. Now, it's a contract. You signed it. Hopefully, you read it before you signed it. But in just in case, you need to follow the clause of the contract. Because if you go to court, the judge is going to say, well, why didn't you follow the contract? There's a lot of he said, she said. And that goes back to what we said earlier, paper trail. If you end up litigating with a contractor, let me tell you this. It could be a year or two years before you go to court. Do you have a sharp memory? I can't tell you what I had for breakfast last week. Well, maybe I can. My point is, friends, is that the paper trail Two years from now, when you say, here's the text message where I asked him to stop the job. Here's the text message where I said to him, we need to meet. I'm not happy. He may not have the paperwork. That's what the judge is going to look at. Paper trail wins. The person with the better information is always going to win. Now, I'm always going to recommend stay away from court at all costs. It becomes a headache. So when you litigate, you got to get a contractor or you got to get a con uh, an attorney who understands home improvement contracting law, not real estate, not commercial construction, not architectural, but home improvement because it's its own unique animal. Yes, it's in the construction field in the drill down category is home improvement, but it must be a person like that. Now, there are people like that, so it's important. Sometimes a, law, a strong lawyer letter will contract goes the other way because sometimes contractors don't want to litigate. That's the whole point. So that's that issue. Now, what if he doesn't respond and no one shows up? You need to go to the city that you live in and see if there was a permit pulled because permits are the law. You have to, you have to pull permits. And you need to send a letter to the city that this guy has, has vacated the job and has not 
come back to cancel the permit. And then you need to document everything again. When I say document, I mean take pictures of everything. Scan, email the contractor's uh, contract with you. And then send him a uh, letter that says, due to non-performance, we're terminating you off of this project and uh, we're going to move on with someone else. You need to put that in writing. You need to put that on email. You need to text it to him. You need to do it as many ways as possible just so that if he says, oh, I never knew that. I went and bought material. I'm suing you for something. No, 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 no. Text, email, letter. Go to his office. Tape it to his door. Take a picture that you taped it to the door, right? There are certain ways you can do this, and you can prove it. Contractors are not always honest. That's important. Now, let's flip the script. What if you're the, one, the reason? What if it's your fault that the contractor slowed down? Do you know that 50% of the time, homeowners are at fault? That's the real sad truth. So you got to weigh that. Just ask yourself, hey, did I do something here? Because a lot of times spouses, they don't communicate. Or they say, oh, I'm going to go get, I'm going to supply the vanity. And you get a 36-inch vanity, and the opening's only 34. What do you mean it's 34? The measurement's wrong. Now you've slowed the job down. And you've cost the contractor money because he has to open it out of the box, try and install it. It's the wrong size. Plumbing. There's all kinds of things that happen. That's a big issue. So ask yourself the question, is this something that I caused? Now, there are a lot of people who are in denial. A lot of contractors, same way. So it's, it's got to be a win-win. But think of, just ask yourself the question. Ask someone you trust, hey, is this something I did? You just don't know. So you got to make sure that your relationship with your contractor, it's almost like a marriage. you got to trust each other. You have to communicate. In fact, in everything I talk about in home improvement, the nucleus of successful renovation is communication. So remember that. So if you like this information, please go visit my website or go to our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe. Uh, click a comment and the likes, and always email me personally, adam at hireitdone.com. I'll always help homeowners. And if you're a contractor and you do really great work, I'd love to meet you. Thanks for tuning in. What you don't know can hurt you. Hireitdone.com.